If you guys like what I'm doing with the channel, if you could hit the subscribe button or like and comment, that would be awesome. I would very much appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Laps Comic Fan. I'm Steve, and today we're talking Doctor Strange and the Nexus of Nightmares number one. So I'm not sure if this is uh, a self-contained story. It seems like this issue is, at least. But I'm not sure if this is going to be an ongoing series. I, I don't think so. I'm not 100% sure. Watch me be 100% wrong. But it's really cool. I liked it. I got this on Comixology on Amazon because it was like 2 bucks. So I was like, yeah, screw it. I'll do it. And since Doctor Strange is coming out next week, I thought that would be awesome to do because I'm going to do a couple more Doctor Strange things. Uh, we're also, me, John, my wife, and a buddy of ours is going to go see the movie. We will definitely do the same thing we always do before movies. We'll give our predictions and what we want to see out of it and, you know, whatever. But right as soon as we get out, we will give our initial reaction, and that will have spoilers. That will have spoilers. So there's that. All right, so let's get into this Doctor Strange book. By the power of the Vashanti and the waxing of the moon. He's never been one of my uh, favorite comic book characters, but I loved the, the, the movie. I loved the Doctor Strange movie. It's one of my favorite MCU movies. And I think Benedict Cumberbatch is a great Doctor Strange because he doesn't do the whole, the Nagaflumes of Nagafarin, stuff like that. He doesn't, he doesn't do that. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think that's uh, pretty good. It works for comic books, I guess. Some of the stuff he does, I, I did not care for uh, in the way that they, they do the spells and stuff. But it's it's cool. I actually like this book. This book was fun, and he does all that stuff in it and, it, and it works for this one. The comic starts off in a castle in Transylvania, where its reputation rivals nearby Castle Dracula in its heyday. And who is behind all these new atrocities since the vampire nation has relocated to Chernobyl? It's Baron Carl Amadeus Mordo and he is trying to contact an unearthly entity older than Earth itself, Nightmare. Mordo is speaking to the Lord of the Dream World, who displays his power in his realm by having the Beyonders in the palm of his hand and crushing them. These are the same Beyonders from Jonathan Hickman's Secret Wars in 2015. A definite recommendation. Nightmare's plan is to get into the real world and take it over, and Mordo knows a spell in the Darkhold that could make this a reality. But there's one problem. It resides under the protection and in the house of the Sorcerer Supreme, Stephen Strange. Nightmare has been invading Strange's dreams for weeks and putting doubts about his worthiness of being the Sorcerer Supreme in his mind, and it has weakened the enchanted barrier around the Sanctum, and it is time for them to attack. Mordo assures Nightmare that this will be done. So the comic starts off and it's like this castle outside and you, you get you get who's in there and it's been a horrible place apparently. The locals uh, have uh, compared it to Castle Dracula, which isn't too far away. And I guess the vampires had left that area and went to Chernobyl. But who infested the area now is Baron Mordo. And apparently he's a giant butthole. So he's in there and he's summoning the vapors of Valtor so he could go to sleep and, and go into the nightmare realm. <laughs> I, can't, I can't help it with the, the Doctor Strange books. Uh, so he's in there, and he's trying to get a hold of Nightmare, and that's intriguing to begin with, because Nightmare runs the Nightmare Realm, where basically he's as powerful as anything there. Now, don't get me wrong, he's still powerful outside of the Nightmare Realm, but the longer he's out, the, the less power he has, and he's just he's just better in, in the Nightmare Realm. It's his place in the same vein of Mephisto is stronger in the Hell Realm, or whatever they call it. He would be very powerful if... He could get everybody on Earth to sleep. If he could do that, then he could come to this reality and just wipe us out. That's how powerful Nightmare is. So when Mordo's walking up to Nightmare, Nightmare's trying to be intimidating. He's like, look, this is my realm. This is where I'm all powerful. You want to see some shit? Look at this. And he pulls out the Beyonders. You know, the ones from the Hickman Secret Wars that <laughs> basically destroyed all of reality, the whole multiverse. He has them in his hands, and he's just like... <laughs> and crushes them. I guess that was just a show of intimidation because Mordo's just like, yeah, so that spell I was telling you about, it's in the dark hold, and we're going to need to get that, but it's kind of protected by Doctor Strange. So, yeah. And Nightmare tells him, hey, I've been invading Strange's mind for a while now, and I'm, I've been casting doubts on him 
as the Sorcerer Supreme. And apparently that is big because the Sanctum Sanctorum has a mystic barrier around it. And it flows off of how strong Steven is or how good his will is or something like that. And it, the self-doubt in him is weakening his spells and weakening him. That's the perfect time to attack. And Mordo tells Nightmare, you know, this is going to get done. We meet up with Strange and Wong having a cup of tea and seeing the effects of Nightmare's meddling with Steven's confidence. He's having doubts about his ability as the Sorcerer Supreme. Has he really changed? Has his arrogance as the man he was, the surgeon with the hands of God, just transferred over to him being the Sorcerer Supreme? He has never had to deal with such self-doubts since the Ancient One picked him to wear the cape and amulet over Mordo. His emotional state is in turmoil and he is very tired, a luxury his current position doesn't afford him. He must have strength and clear thinking, so sleep is his only option, hopefully a dreamless sleep. This does not happen, and Nightmare takes another opportunity. We cut to the Sanctum Sanctorum, and Steven is sitting there, and he's kind of having doubts about himself, and he's kind of going through a crisis, and he's talking to Wong, and Wong's telling him, like, look, man, when you came here, you overcame that horrific accident with your hands, and Strange is like, yeah, but did I take that arrogance as the surgeon and just transfer it over to being the Sorcerer Supreme? And Wong kind of reassures him, look, you're meant to protect this reality from everything mystical and magical. That's a lot of weight on your shoulders. And I've never known you to be anything but a compassionate person, and I'm glad to call you friend. So Strange is, is, finds comfort in that a little bit, and he's off to sleep. But we see Nightmare waiting for him so he's in his dreams <clears throat> and he's dreaming about when he was a doctor and he performed this brilliant surgery and this guy came into the office it's like the whole getting ready to get into the car accident scene he comes into the office and strange is being arrogant and won't perform surgery on him because he doesn't have money and the guy's like well i hope you never need a doctor foreshadowing so he gets into the accident and they show him like yelling at doctors like you can't repair me and they offer him like a job as a consultant he's like i'm no charity case and all this other shit and he's like medical science might not be able to to do this you know to regain your hands for surgery medical science isn't there yet and he sees all these other doctors who tell him the same thing so we finally see him going to see the ancient one and he's accepted in there. And the angel one's like, listen, I've heard your story. I'll consider it. But you can stay here until I give you an answer. And I guess he hadn't given him an answer forever. And he has the, all these outbursts of anger. And the chosen one's like, why? You're so angry all the time. Yeah, I'm angry. I've, I've been here for days. You haven't given me an answer. I, I, I demand you give me an answer. Ah, oh, crap. Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And he's walking away. And he hears Mordo talking to one of the other guys there with a plot to kill the ancient one and he goes to tell the ancient one and he turns around and he's like no steven you're the evil one mordo is my greatest disciple and blah 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 so things are different he's not remembering it correctly nightmares messing with the dream so it's it's casting more doubt on steven as the sorcerer supreme and he's banging on the door like, no, Mordo's evil. You have to listen to me. You got to listen to me. And in our reality, Steven's sleeping. He's like, I'm a good man. I pro I swear I'm a good man. <laughs> Promise me. Nightmare's watching over him like. <laughs> but just then Wong breaks in the door because he hears him, you know, having a nightmare. You're going to be all right, man. It's just a bad dream. And he tells Wong about the dream and how it felt so real. Wong tells him, no, that's not what happened. You know, in reality... Yeah, the Ancient One picked you and you became the master of the mystical arts. And he, he's like, yeah, I know, but I can't shake this indecision that the dreams have, have given me. It's, it's just not good. It's not good for me. I'm messing everything up over here as the Sorcerer Supremes. You have made fun of me for the last time. I, Stephen Strange, am the Sorcerer Supreme. And I'm Burrito Supreme. There's a crashing sound coming from downstairs and they have an intruder. Strange goes to defend his home, even in his weakened state. It's Mordo, and he's not impressed with the Sorcerer Supreme. He knows he's been weakened because of what Nightmare has been doing to Steven in his dreams, and that has weakened the mystical barrier around the Sanctum, allowing Mordo easy entry. He tells Strange he's come here for the Darkhold. Obviously, Strange has no intention on giving it to Mordo, and they start a fight. 
but Strange's spells aren't having an effect on Mordo. They recount his time there as a student under the Wise One while they continue to battle, and Mordo taunts Strange about his self-doubt and the strength of his position with the Mystic Arts. Mordo shrugs Steven's attacks aside and summons the vicious Vipers of Valtor. Strange uses a spell of banishment on the Vipers, but Mordo uses the Clamps of Sidorak to stop Steven from speaking or breathing, only for a few moments. He explains his plan to use the Darkhold to summon Nightmare and absorb him so they can rule this dimension side by side and use Strange as a slave to them. Wong comes in as the last line of defense but is taken care of quickly. Mordo is drawn to the evil power of the Darkhold and takes it. The clamps of Sidorak disappear. Wong and Strange talk about what happened and realize the fatigue and doubt were all a plan by Mordo and Nightmare, but Steven is still affected by it about who he is as a person. Strange and Wong are sitting there and there's a crashing sound downstairs and they go and see who it is and it's Mordo, obviously. And he was able to get in there because like I was saying before how the Sanctum Sanctorum's uh, mystical barrier is dependent upon Steven's strength and will and his ability to keep spells going. And since he's having doubts about being the Sorcerer Supreme, uh, it's weakened the barrier enough for Mordo to get in. So... They start fighting, but it's like Steven's spells have no effect on him. Mordo's just shrugging them off left and right. And he, <laughs> he, he summons the vicious vipers of Valtor. I just, <laughs> everything is like the bubbling bongos of Bordum. If it starts with whatever letter, that's the rest of it. So it's the blank of the blank. <laughs> and Mordo's messing with them too. They're kind of recounting his time there and and you know how like in karate movies where they're they're fighting but they're talking about everything that has happened up to that point that those two people are fighting like their their problems with each other. That's kind of like what it is. Strange goes for a banishment spell and he gets the clamps of Sidorak around his neck and it keeps him from talking, from casting spells, but it also keeps him from breathing. Wong tries to step in and you know be the last line of defense but he can't and he just gets wrapped up real quick and the dark hold is is drawing mordo to it and he gets the dark hold and gets out of there so the clamps of cigarette come off of strange and him and wong start talking and he's like damn man i can't i just can't do this anymore and then wong's like but you you got to realize that this was nightmare nightmare did this to you so if he would have never if mordo would never mention nightmare i don't think that would have given strange the edge because he wasn't thinking that anyway which i don't know why because if you have like messed up dreams you're probably gonna think hmm it's probably nightmare i've tangled with this guy a lot so it, it was kind of like you know just here you go here's your answer <laughs> strange you kind of need this one because you're you're kind of down in the shits right now and steven's still racked by all of this and and wong gives him this pep talk like look man the ancient one believed in you and he gave you the ability to do all of these things and you're a good man you were a good man in waiting you you might not have been at first but since you've been here you have been and you have done everything the right way and you abandon all your materialistic stuff. You don't care about that anymore. So St Stephen needed to be reminded of this. Doctor Strange, he just, he, he, all the doubt that Nightmare has been put into him has really been messing with him. So right now he, he gets, he's refreshed and he's like, fuck yes, I am going to kick Mordo's ass. So we cut to Transylvania and Mordo is kind of looking through the dark hole and he starts this summoning spell to summon Nightmare and, 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 you know, he, he wants to play the ancient barriers that separated the world of sleep from the world of the wake. Ah! And, I'll, and I'll cut to this picture here, but it's kind of crazy. When he starts this summoning, it almost looks like Shumagorath is coming out. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Because you see the, the, the rift start to split, but it's tentacles that come out. He's casting the spell and he's like, all the... the evil entities that come from darkness that want to come into this reality let it let it be basically and that's whenever we get dr strange who comes back to deal with mordo dr strange leaps out of a portal to stop mordo from summoning nightmare but mordo is ready for him and they proceed to have a high level sorcerer fight steven summons the ebony bolt of bedevilment mordo counters with a conjurer's sphere of containment that many occultists have tried to break free from but have failed Stephen reminds him, while that may be true, 
They're not on the level of Doctor Strange, and he bursts free from the containment sphere. Mordo goes in for another spell, but it is countered by Steven with ease. He has one last trick up his sleeve, and calls upon the flames of Faltine. Steven has very little time to counter this spell, or it will give Mordo all the time he needs to finish bringing Nightmare into this dimension. He flips through the Book of Vashanti for a counterspell in his mind, and he has it. The whirling winds of Watum. They'll be enough to stop the flames and blow Mordo away from the altar he started his summoning from. Now it is time for Mordo to pay for his sins. So Strange leaps out of this portal, and it's awesome. He's all, I am here! Ah! <laughs> and he's uh, gonna stop Mordo from summoning Nightmare. They have this awesome sorcerer battle where they get into, you know, he, he's using the ebony bolts of bedevilment, and Mordo counters with a conjurer sphere of containment, which nobody has ever broken out of, and Mordo's kind of taunting him, and he's like, look, dude, those are other sorcerers you caught in there, not me. I'm fucking the Sorcerer Supreme. But boom and busts out of there. It comes down to Mordo uses the flames of the fault line, and Doctor Strange has very little time before the flames start eating up everything. He has to go through the book of Vashanti in his head and do this very quick, and he's gotta find a counter spell. And he comes up with the whirling winds of Watum. He does. And that blows Mordo away and seemingly stops the summoning but it's already started so we don't know how much is open and if nightmare can get out anyway or what he can do or if anything else can slip out of that hole uh i mean maybe even if nightmare can't get out maybe something else can so it, there's a lot of stuff going on here and some of the stuff is hilarious because like <laughs> he's uh, there's a part where Mordo uses these spikes of the seraphim or something, and he's in, in, in Strange <laughs> does a counterspell, and he's like, let that fall like petal blossoms at my feet. <laughs> it's just like, Jesus Christ, dude. That's a lot of talking for fighting. <laughs> but, I mean, th we're dealing with massively powerful people here. Massively powerful. Like, if... if if there was a spell from the Darkhold that could get Nightmare into this realm and he could have all his power, you're sc we're screwed. We're completely screwed. The end is near for Mordo, but he tells Strange it's not over because the powers from Nightmare's realm are ripping through the rift that he started. Strange has another dilemma that takes all of his confidence in remembering spells. He uses the spell of closure from the pages of the Darkhold itself. Mordo can't believe his perfect plan has been overcome by Doctor Strange, and Nightmare grabs Mordo as the portal starts to close, telling him his arrogance was his downfall, and for failing him, he will pay with all the atrocities of the Nightmare Realm. Mordo begs for his life, and Strange tells him he was willing to sacrifice his own reality by having Nightmare's realm devour ours. Let the scales be balanced, and it devour you. After everything is over, Steven brings the Darkhold back and places a spell of concealment on it and talks with Wong about the darkness of the book and never having it fall into the wrong hands again. They talk about the problems he has and will probably struggle with them every day, but he will never let them manifest as blatantly as he did because he will always strive to be the good man he knows he sees himself as. He tells Wong goodnight and goes to sleep. No one has earned a peaceful sleep more than the Sorcerer Supreme this night. So everything is seemingly over, but Mordo points and he tells Strange, look, Nightmare's coming out. It's already started. You can't stop it. And Strange has to remember another spell. All that confidence that he had before is has come back to him where in the, earlier in the story, he wouldn't have been able to do all this. Like, remember the, uh, the spell from the Book of Ashanti right off like that. Now he has to remember a spell from the Darkhold, a spell of closure and it starts to close the rift. And this is where Mordo just breaks down. He's like, my plan, like, no, no. And it's just going from worse to worse for Mordo because that's when Nightmare decides, mm, I might not be able to get out of here, but you, and he grabs him. Mordo's begging for his life, begging Strange, please, please save me. Strange says, no. No, you, you were literally willing to have 
nightmare come into this reality and destroy everybody here so you guys can rule side by side. So let the scales be balanced and you can have fun in the nightmare realm. And that's where Nightmare tells Mordo, because of your arrogance, uh, you fool, um, pretty much announcing everything to Strange and, and telling him everything, you know, giving him a, a, any inkling to, of how to defeat us, you are going to spend the next however long down here experiencing all the atrocities of the Nightmare Realm. I thought that was fantastic. I thought that was so great. So after everything is over, Strange brings the Darkhold back. He puts a concealment spell on it so it can never fall in the wrong hands again. And him and Wong, they talk about what happened and all is put right. And at the end, Strange takes a nap. Basically, he goes to sleep and no one deserves more sleep than this guy at this point. And that's how it ends. And I thought this book was was really fun. It's a self-contained story. It, it, the art's cool in it. Doctor Strange, like I said, it's not my bag whenever it's in the comics. I like him in certain comics, but I've never really read his own stuff. Now, I am in the midst of reading The Death of Doctor Strange and some of his other things. And the... the it's pretty good. If you like Doctor Strange, if you if you like that whole mystic arts and stuff like that, I would totally recommend this book because it's an easy thing to get started on. There's like four characters that you already kind of know, Wong, Strange, Mordo, and Nightmare. I'm sure you've heard of him because if you if, if you haven't read the comics, I know you've watched WandaVision and everybody was like, no, it's Mephisto, no, it's Nightmare, no, it's this. And then when Loki happened, and they had the nightmare department or whatever. Everybody thought, oh, shit, it's nightmare. And it's just a really good book for you to read, self-contained. You don't have to have any other reading. All you need to know is Doctor Strange is the Sorcerer Supreme and Nightmare is messing with his head. That's really all you need to know. And it's a really good book just to get into. I liked it. I give it a recommendation. What do you guys think? Comment below. And tell me what you guys think, man. I, I, I dig it. I dig it. So next on the Laps Comic Fan, Pop Culture Project, guys. We will be here tonight, Saturday at uh, 8.30, 9.30 p.m. I'll, I'll send out a tweet. Uh, we're going to do some live streaming about Doctor Strange 2. And we're finally going to talk about some of the DC animated movies that we watched. And we might talk Iron Man because I we also did watch that. So I appreciate everybody for being here. Uh, also, the Batman contest winner has not gotten a hold of me. He has one more week. And if he doesn't, I'm I'm going to give it to a fan or somebody in the stream. I'm going to set something up to where you have to be in the stream to win, and I will pick a winner. And I appreciate everybody who subscribes. I, I really want to get this stuff out there. But, hey, have a great night, everybody. And hopefully we'll see you tonight in the stream. Woohoo!